Jard is sponsored by Five the Gamer, so for all of your headset needs, go to fivethegamer.com and use discount code JARD20 at checkout to receive 10% off your next order. Jard is also partnered with Xtiffy, so for all of your GTA resources, go check out xtiffy.com. That's x t i f f i.com. We do have our own website, complete with a full episode catalog, merch, and more information about each of our cast members, so you can find that at jarredpodcast.com. We are also on Patreon, so to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash jarredpodcast. I hit it. I hit it. I hit it. I still found a way to trick you guys. (laughs) Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Jard. I I hit it like I can't miss. What's that from? On this week's depressive episode. Depressive? (gasps) What? (laughs) Oh, I meant for me personally. Oh, I was going to (laughs) say. What? You guys got mascara tonight, and that's it. <laughs> I'm so mentally exhausted. <gasps> do, do, do we ask why? You look why? fantastic. There's not a why, Ryan. It's a depressive episode. It doesn't have to be triggered by anything. It'd be happening. That just, that's why I wanted to... That, that's why I wanted to... So I wanted to know if I should ask why, or if we just... I'll stay in the corner. It's fine. While we're on the topic of education for Ryan, during, <laughs> during, <laughs> during, during my little, my little elusive hey! episode, I, I have a tendency to kind of like be really in and out of the group chat, as you all may have noticed. I'm like very, I'm yes. either there or I'm like off the grid. <laughs> Yes. Like, not even opening it. <laughs> yes. I did happen to catch, though, earlier when Amber sent a selfie of her makeup and Ryan said, what makeup? <laughs> what was that? What did you mean by that? Do you mean it like she wasn't wearing makeup or you were fascinated by her titties? You have to out me. It, it, because the, the first the thing chat, I thought, the I thought you were trying to be thing. complimentary and be like, oh, what makeup? <laughs> you but have, I, I'm sitting here like, you don't say that to a woman who spends as much money on makeup as me and Amber do. Okay. For real. A couple of things. First of all, out to me in the group chat is one thing. Out to me on the podcast is another thing. But then again, everybody knows what I'm like. Anyway, second of all, it was meant to be taken in both ways. What makeup? Except she says, well, what makeup? You don't need it. But also, certainly, yeah. It, it's always titties it, it, with it, Ryan. It, it, I have figured it, out. It's the, it's the, it's okay. the, it's the titties. I just, I just felt to, I needed to mention that because well, I feel like you have a lot to learn about women. Still. <laughs> oh, I'm very well aware that I definitely need to learn a lot, a lot, a lot about women. As we, we, we and, and words. And words. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and words. Yes. Well, I'm sure you. I'm sure. I'm sure. F- it. I'm sure you'll educate me over time. Oh, we should do a summer reading list. A what? <laughs> yeah. Got summer book to read together as friends. Ryan is living proof that Britain does not have summer reading lists. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know what it is. Oh, is it literally a, a list throughout the you summer guys of never books had you have that to in read? School? You didn't have a summer reading list? Is it literally where you have a list of books you have to read through the summer? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we had like homework where we would have to read like a book throughout a week, but it wasn't just during the summer, it was about throughout the whole year. 
That no, was it. they always gave us a list of like what five to ten books to read over the summer, and then we went back to school, and it yeah. was like, oh, by oh, the way, had... that was yeah, like we write an this... essay on to kill a mockingbird. <laughs> yeah, like I like I noticed it like like in like grade school or whatever. Like you got like elementary school, whatever. You got like a list of maybe like ten to fifteen books, and then like the older you got, then you would just get one big giant book to read over the summer as a teenager because that's what you want to do I mean sometimes not all the time but and yeah and you'd always have to like come back to school the first day with like a project in hand already like happy first day of school present so you at least that's I, I how almost, my honor I almost never did summer reading which is ironic because I love reading obviously but it's just I it, it was always stuff I didn't want to read like if, I, yeah. if I'm not interested in something I'm, it's not gonna stick. Exactly. And I like cannot concentrate on it. So I love reading, but it's got to I mean, be what the, the fuck time, I want to read. Mm-hmm. The only time they got us to, we had to read books was at specific times. So it's like, <clears throat> okay, this week you're gonna read this book, and we'll do a presentation of it next week. Mm. It wasn't yeah, we, over the we, we, summer holidays. Yeah, we, we never got that. homework or anything over summer. We would have that like cool, cool, throughout cool, as well. Cool. Yeah, we in summer we never got homework just with the book thing. Yeah, you have to read like a book, one book a week, and then you'd be graded on it like at the end or something like that. Or I don't know, it was crap. Not that much. <laughs> There's only one that I actually regret not participating in for summer reading, and I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Amber, but I'm pretty sure there was one summer where they had assigned the Lovely Bones for summer reading. And I did not read it. Uh, I never got that, but I did read that book. It's I, I sad. wish I had read it, but I did not. It's it's a sad read. Well, I imagine so. I saw the movie. Yeah, that was it's, that's it's that's about sad. the time I regretted not reading it. I was like, damn, what the f- was I doing in high school? I tell you what, one year we got Life Having of sex? Pi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, can I hear that story? That. No, one year we got Life of Pi. I did not. I did not read that book, and I felt guilty about it because that was like one of the one summer reads I just didn't participate in. I I never watched the movie because of it. Like I was like, I never read the book. I can't. I can't justify watching the movie, so I never did. I must be thinking about private school with the summer reading list because it wasn't just one book when we were at Village. It was at least half a dozen to read over the summer. Ugh. So do you guys it would usually be like read, one um, big thick one for us. Did you have to read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? No. No. I know I I know of it, but I don't I just we didn't it wasn't on our list. Especially coming that, from yeah. private Christian school, there was like kind of limited. I mean, we could read some of the the greats, but yeah, very limited in content. I don't remember reading One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, but I remember doing, we had to do an English project of, uh, is it of Mice of Men? Yep, I did have to do uh, that one. I had to do like an English project on that. They said, oh, you know, know, we'll read through the book, you have to analyse everything, and all this s***, and yeah, do that, and by the end, I hated it. But yeah. (laughs) Well, (laughs) speaking of reading, I'm working on curing this depressive episode by spending loads of money on thriftbooks.com. Ooh. I ordered a lot of books the other day. <laughs> I always feel better when I spend money. What's that about? I do as well. <laughs> so weird. It was payday for me the, uh, today. Uh, wait, no, yesterday. And we're already spending a load, and I'm like, I'm happy. I'm good. Just gotta wait for them to come now. I ordered a vacuum mop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that big spender. <laughs> Look, I'm really, that's I'm really excited for it. I'm really excited for it to come in because from my kitchen. <laughs> I I am a house of you know two adults, a child, a dog, and four cats. So the idea of having a vacuum mop is very exciting so for me. <laughs> see that what did I it's this it's it's the simplest the simplest pleasure that i need 
Actually, one came today and I haven't even opened it yet. It's just, it's down here next to me. I know what it is, I just haven't opened it yet because I've already got one here in front of me, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to open it. <laughs> nothing like that, nothing like that. Yeah. No, 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 seriously, I just ordered more runs. That was it. I just ordered more. I've gone through them so quick, I ordered a load more. <laughs> That's I did it. bring my Toblerone in here <laughs> for tonight. Yeah, I, I've almost completely demolished my butt, so. You Oh, you climbed that, didn't you? Oh. <coughs> well, I'm glad you've enjoyed the butt. Um. <laughs> it's funny because okay my my two and a half year old niece was in town from georgia this whole week she stayed with my parents and i brought her over here one day to watch her and she i mean she's never been here before and she's right in the middle of potty training and so their whole thing with her <laughs> is if you use the potty we'll give you a piece of candy she's like all right cool doesn't work anyway but whatever <laughs> so we bring her over here and I'm like you want to see what kind of candy I got if you use the potty and she's like yeah I'm like okay which I didn't realize until she came over that I literally my house is not kid friendly at all I knew that before but it was just kind of emphasized when she came over <laughs> I didn't realize just how much candy we have everywhere <laughs> so she and I sat down at the table in the kitchen to eat breakfast when we first got here and we've got like these these shelves on either side of the windows in the kitchen and on one of the shelves or on one of the you know whatever there's just this pile of candy just like Smarties and chocolate and whatever just chilling there and she like just happens to look over like she's just looking around you know she's never been here before she looks over and she's like oh that's candy <laughs> I'm like, yeah, uh -huh. I guess we have a lot of candy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but you want to see, you want to go pick out some candy for if you use the potty? And she's like, yeah, sure. So I bring her in here, and I've got all my, all my stuff from you guys on this bookcase. It takes up an entire shelf on the bottom of the bookcase. I call it my international pantry. <laughs> <laughs> so I bring her in here, and I'm like, look at that. And she kind of looked at it, and she was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, sit down and look at all of this candy. <laughs> and I like start pulling stuff out, just pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling all this stuff. And she's like, oh, that's a lot of candy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she still <laughs> her pants four <laughs> times anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Oh. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, well, my, my son is, um, my mom showed me today. It was probably the most heartwarming thing that's happened to me all week. Um, mom was watching, uh, Weldon, what was it, yesterday? No, day before yesterday. No. Yeah. And, um, they went outside and played and they were just walking through the woods and she took all these cute pictures of them and put them on Facebook. No big deal. Mom's always posting pictures of Weldon. It's fine. Um, I go over there today to just hang out with her and help her put up her groceries and shit. And she's like, oh, Weldon is famous. And I'm like, what? She's like, look at this. My mom has joined a Facebook group and it's called <laughs> Grandmas Loving Their Grandkids. There are grandparent posting groups. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. So apparently one of the pictures that she took, she posted him on it and the fun fact about my son, he's never had a haircut. He's 4 years old. He does have very very long hair. Um and it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um it had 196 likes on it likes and heart reacts wow so my mom was very excited about that and i was like um first off i didn't even know that my mom knew anything about facebook groups like she asked 
<laughs> she acts like she doesn't know how to use, you know, certain things, and she doesn't know how to do that, and she's never on Facebook. It's a lie. Anyway. <laughs> So I'm like, uh, can I go through those comments? Because, like, I am i don't mind posting my son on my Facebook. But, you know, groups and stuff I'd be a little hesitant about. Yeah. So I'm like, let me... So I'm like, let me just look through these comments. And y'all, it was just a bunch of grandmas loving on my son. There was not one negative comment. They were all so sweet. So shout out to all the grandmas on that Facebook group. I'm going to join like you're it. Like, I feel like you're my grandma now. You are my nanny. I'm going to come over and I want cookies. <laughs> I'm about to infiltrate it. Oh, well, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was sweet. But no, I didn't know that my mom knew how to f- Facebook groups. I, I don't think my mom knows how to f- with Facebook groups. She doesn't even use the Facebook app. She brings it up on her browser. Oh, that's so sweet. She says she doesn't want to download the app because she doesn't want them to have her information or something. I don't. I don't know. Something. Yeah, a little, like, little bit late. That sounds reasonable. I'm like, okay, mom, whatever. They've, they've already had her <laughs> thoughts and they're already making an advert for it. It's, uh... <laughs> well, I don't have Facebook on my phone apart just the messenger. Just the messenger. Yeah. I didn't. Oh, even that's because you, you got to keep that. up with us. <laughs> that's what Abdi does. <laughs> Yeah, Abdi doesn't even have an active Facebook. Oh, it's it's two separate things at this point. We're lucky if we even see Abdi's face once every four months. (laughs) True. It's very true. (laughs) Took took me a few years before I got to see that. (laughs) I think the last somewhat selfie he sent to the group, I got so excited. I even showed I even showed it to Alan. I was like, look. I was like, we never get to see his face. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Shout I'm not telling Abby. him you said that, because he's, then he's never going to send a picture again. He'll <laughs> <laughs> hear this anyway, most likely. So. I'll say, if he, if he listens, he'll find out. <laughs> Love you, baby. <laughs> so. He's trying to trying to pass the time because I don't feel like presenting today. <laughs> Present, woman, because we've got nothing else. Yeah, my no- my notes aren't finished or I, I would I, I would go for you. Hey, Dougie, you want to go in my place? <laughs> <laughs> don't play my card. Don't play my card. <laughs> I'm saving that one. <laughs> I'm going to try to make this. Read it on the fly. Let's see. I'm going to get my, I'm gonna, my I'm gonna, I'm ready. Gonna, I'm going to try to make it last, because I know I have a tendency to talk pretty fast whenever I'm presenting, so I'm going to try not to. I thought I had lost my notes, and I was like, well, we're not going to have an episode. <laughs> Nothing substantial. Just sit here. Well, let's see. we've done it a few times where we've just <laughs> our way through, like off the cuff, on the fly, haven't we? Well, looking back at the first two seasons, I don't know how we did that. I don't know. Every, I mean, I, I get it, like, you know, for a bonus episode, but every single week. Like, what? Yeah. How did we do Speci- that? Specifically season one, there was a few where where we it was just on the go uh, somehow. I mean, I did, um, like, the group discussion thing, but oh, yeah, for yeah, the most yeah, part, yeah. there was, like, I'm like, how? Just thinking about that now <laughs> just stresses me well, out. Yeah. You sort of did have a basic structure of what we were going to do. Yeah. True. You always had that. It'd be a flow uh, of sorts. But yeah. Mm. I remember we'd show up some days and Jess would be like, just so you know, I've not got anything today for you, like, structure wise, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> As you get here, she's like, yeah, I've got nothing for us today, so let's just go. And it was like, wait, what? Okay, we're going. And that was it. And, and I remember. Was- and that was me coming off a depressive often. episode then. Too, so. <laughs> yeah, and I remember it wouldn't be very often, but every now and then it would be that way in the second season. And it's just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. We'll figure out something to talk about. We got, we got it in there sometimes. Not all the time, though. <laughs> um, well, tagging on to the, the Britney episode, um, 
There is supposed to be a Netflix one coming out, documentary about it. They are saying that there could be a sequel to the Framing doc- or Britney documentary. And it's, it's being rumored now that she wasn't talked about in the documentary. Her name, what's her, Lou Taylor, I think it is. She's some sort of affiliation with Britney, but she's like one of the reasons Britney's in the conservatorship. I, I'm hearing that she's trying to put Kanye West into a conservatorship now. I don't know if it's true or not, but I just thought that was mm. a little interesting bit of info. Anyway. Oh, and just uh, just a quick flashback to the last season, matter of factly, the last episode of season three. Um, if anyone shows oh, yeah. an interest in watching Alan versus Pharaoh on HBO, I've watched the first episode. It... <laughs> It is a difficult watch. So it's a series. But, it's not like a documentary. Yeah, yeah. I, from well, yeah, from what I from what I gather, it's going to be four parts. Okay. Um, so far, I've only watched part one. It is a difficult watch, but it is good. It's just difficult. I've been meaning to watch that. I keep forgetting. I restarted Sex in the City. It's just such a terrible show. Like it. It's truly it, it, awful. Like the, yeah, like the first the first episode on Alan versus Pharaoh is very much just how early on grooming started and what it can look like and how passive a lot of people can be about it. So it it's just a hard realization. But it's very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm here for it. Calm down, Ryan. Well, just a quick. <laughs> On my screen, he was just frozen in the one position, looking at the screen. <laughs> uh, the we had, grab our titties to feel better. That's our comfort zone. <laughs> just a quick refresher. My topic this season is the monster of Lake Norman, or as we Normie lovingly call him, Normie. Um, let's see, jogging people's memory, like a Loch Ness monster kind of deal in North Carolina, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, I'm going to get more into the sightings today. I combed through several pages of postings on LakeNormanMonster.com to find the most intriguing ones, I feel like. A lot of them, like I mentioned last week, were like, I saw something out there. <laughs> I just leave it as that. <laughs> <laughs> or, I hope that you know, accent comes I, back later tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was in the water and I felt something. <laughs> wow. Thank you for it your contribution. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and pick up where I left off with the guy who had, I guess, family ties to the lake from the time it was created. The one that said that, um, was it his mom, I think, had told him about how people were bringing just buckets of fish to toss into the lake so it wouldn't be yeah. bare of fish. Okay, mm-hmm. this is that same guy, he had like a continuation. Um, I think his was in like the, his story was in like the 70s or the 80s, but he, he went scuba diving in the lake looking for the, the sunken or whatever submerged town. He went scuba diving looking for it because he was trying to find like old bottles or like artifacts would that be the word yeah um yeah. i guess <clears throat> so yeah he he picked a few sites to go diving at and let's see he said on his third dive they found a group of three buildings one of which was a house and it's still it even had the glass in the windows still and he said the um the front porch it was collapsed. It was about 80 feet below the surface. Um, oh. They spotted a hole in the side of the house, and they decided to go through the hole instead of going through the front door because the porch was, like, partially collapsed, so they didn't want it to, like, fall on them or whatever. Um, but they 
he said they never made it into the house. They had underwater lights with their scuba gear, and they could see through the water. They said the clarity was, like, perfect, even that far down. But he said it was dark and it was black from what they could see through the hole in the house. So they shone their lights through the hole, and they saw a huge, quote, huge fish in the house through the hole. He says, quote, it was enormous, bigger than a diver in full scuba, at least eight feet long and three feet across the mouth. We hovered in the water for a good five minutes with our lights on it, not believing what we were seeing. I've never seen a freshwater fish that big. We were both a bit alarmed by what we saw, and we still talk about it from time to time. End quote. Can I, can I interject? Can you f- imagine? <laughs> Okay, but think about it, especially, like, in our area. Like, think about how big a catfish can get. It's just by saying catfish. So, I could, I, but I mean, I also could see where someone just saw a really big catfish and maybe over-exaggerated some of its features or maybe how big it was exactly. Like, even if, like, I see, like, a super big catfish, I'm like, what the f***? Hmm. Well, even on, even on the the bigger catfish on this... The, I was going to say, the bigger a catfish resident. is, the ugliest it is. Go. What? Oh, you didn't hear me? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was saying the bigger a catfish is, the uglier it is and the more scarier oh, gosh, it yeah. looks because oh, yeah. it's a f- catfish. So it would yeah. be easy to think you saw a beast. I mean, mm. I don't, I don't want to see a f- giant catfish either honestly whether it was normie or just a giant catfish i really don't care to see either if we're being completely honest but in that first episode they were i did mention that residents of the lake said that especially closer to the dam the catfish Mm -hmm. could be the size of volkswagens yeah so it's like okay lake monster not lake monster a catfish that big is a lake monster to me (laughs) <laughs> yeah, regardless. I yeah. mean, I'm terrified no. of water. Well, not water. I'm terrified of deep water. I just, I cannot f- with, like, natural, well, Lake Norman's not a natural, naturally occurring lake, but, No, you know, but it's still a large body of water. I where mean, there are I, things living in it, yeah. I'm not down with it. Where basically where it's out of your control in a way, yeah. Like, I don't like I don't like the ocean. Thinking about the ocean freaks me out. Like I'll go to the beach, I'll put my feet in, but I rarely go past ankle deep in the ocean. I mean, I it freaks me the f- out. And then you think, how much of the ocean is undiscovered? It's like eighty, what, eighty uh, or ninety percent or something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have an exact number on this. And a little sneak peek. I don't like it. Has it has to deal with next week's episode. There is approximately... No, 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 no. Yeah, it's more more than 80% of the ocean is unexplored. Yeah, well, I don't like that. a little teaser for next week's episode. That's insane. I mean, they've already said that they know more about the moon than they do the surface of our own oceans. The mm-hmm. f- well, moon. It's soon to be Mars much, as well now. Like, How what much the f- is there to know about the moon, Ryan? I mean, we can see the moon. <laughs> Yes, but that's a whole other... There's nothing there except craters. Oh, what's, what, what's the scientific word? That's a whole other... Oh, f- I got the astro... No, I'm not even going to even attempt to say I wouldn't it. if I were you. Um, I don't want to make... Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I don't f- like water. Yeah. Understood. I mean, I love a pool. I love going to water parks and stuff like that, but... Oh, yeah, shit like that, yeah. The ocean? Nah. No. No, 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 no. No. No, and these people talking about swimming in Lake Norman? Why? (laughs) Why? (laughs) There have been rumors of Normie since its construction, and these people are like, Oh, my God, I was swimming in Lake Norman, and I felt something brush up against my leg. Yeah! (laughs) <laughs> what do you expect? I went swimming with Normie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, we'll what make t-shirts. 
I wonder if there's merch out there for that. I'm sure there is on LakeNormanMonster.com. <laughs> <laughs> I went swimming with Normie. <laughs> Did I mention... Oh, God, I don't... I don't remember if I already covered that part or not. About the film crew going out there? Yeah, didn't they refuse to go back or something? Like one of them no, saw no, something. No, 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 no. That was someone. They were working on the dam or something. Oh, and, no, not the film crew. Okay, so in 2017, a Japanese film crew spent three days on Lake Norman trying to capture Normie. The captain told Lake Norman Publications that on the second day, while using chicken as bait, another captain on board caught something with a 250-pound line. After a long battle, Oof. the line finally snapped and the creature got away. And everyone <gasps> on board agreed that the creature was definitely something bigger than a catfish. Sorry, how much, how thing... much did that weigh? How much was that weight? <clears throat> it was on a 250-pound line. I don't have my phone to do the thing right yep. now. Oh! Sorry, I don't do pounds, so I have to, I have to work that out. Holy sh**. Yeah, so it's supposed to be a line that can withstand reeling in something up to 250 pounds. That's just under 18 stone. That's insane. Yeah. I that makes eight. me f uneasy. <laughs> so Normie likes chicken. <laughs> you say chicken? Just using a whole chicken as a bait? Fucking hell. He likes some more lean white meat. Got it. Who doesn't like chicken, though? I wonder what we... I, I kind of want to go and try to bait him and see what happens. Well, Do catfish eat chicken? go by yourself. I think they'll eat any... No, catfish, mm. do, no, catfish do not eat chicken. Catfish do not eat chicken. That's no. an interesting twist. Because if everyone's because saying he could just be a really big catfish... Why would it eat Because chicken? the reason the reason some people don't even eat catfish is because catfish are they're like bottom level like they are like low eating fish. They don't they don't f with chicken. I think I just broke my own brain. Bait best baits for eat for catching <coughs> catfish. Worms, shade minnows, stink bait. Catfish anything got the nerve to be that big and just want worms? <laughs> There's a category. Yes. Anything, anything from the <laughs> fridge. Have you know what, though? I, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea of a big catfish, though, because catfish nuggets are so good. It does say here, anything from the fridge. Have some questionable, questionable chicken breasts in the fridge. How about some shrimp, steak, pork chops, liver, or hot dogs? Rather than throwing them in the garbage, throw them in the bait bucket. Really? And then on the next category, soap. Catfish <laughs> with anything with strong odour. Just not foul-smelling objects. In recent years, cheap soap has become a popular choice. Okay, so note to self, we need to make a list of bait not to take for catfish. Not so that to, yeah. definitely get normie. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently soap is out of the damn question. God. <laughs> Who, who the hell to use soap? Yeah, to catch who was the fish? first guy to discover that? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! I ran out of bait. Well, I've got this bar I've got of soap. No bait left. I'll just chuck my soap. That. <laughs> yeah. What the? F That's oh. disgusting. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> God. Oh. Need to wash this catfish's mouth out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be quiet. Sorry. Um, so, also in 2017, a 35-year-old Mecklenburg County man spotted a dinosaur-like creature in the water. This one, this guy made the news, apparently. He says, quote, I was on a boat with my friends. We were near the lake's main channel when we saw something splashing around in the water, end quote. <laughs> He and his friends spotted the creature while boating around the southern portion of Lake Norman. He said it was at least 10 feet long and reminded him of the Loch Ness Monster. I don't, so I don't know when why he made that? the news. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, when was that? I wonder if we can find a video. I mean, that website is full of sightings, so I don't know why this guy. I don't know. 
2017. Remind mm. me of like of Loch Ness monster and yeah, there's not many no, visual representations. No yeah, there's there's like one famous photo of the Loch Ness monster and it's not that compelling. So it's strange to me that he made the news. It kind of, it just doesn't it's it's kind of good it kind of goes along with the the Bigfoot thing I guess for me where it's like the attention as or the attention yeah. seeking aspect of it because I mean there are you go on that website and there's just sightings and sightings and sightings and sightings but this one guy made mm -hmm. the news for something that could have Not, just been posted on the website. I was gonna say that's just like the people who claim to have like found Bigfoot remains and like even some of the photos looked super compelling. But when they were offered, like, hey, why don't you bring these into this certain facility? That way an autopsy can be performed. And then mm, they just wouldn't show up just because yeah. they just wouldn't f show up. You've also got to, going off <clears throat> what Jess said, how this guy made the news and yet some of the others don't. You've also got to remember, sometimes certain news outlets don't have a lot to report on. Like, there are Not some you. days where literally nothing happens, and so literally they will have researchers looking for trending or compiling sorts of information that have recently popped up. If they find something that's like, well, yeah, that could make the news because there's nothing else going on. Fuck it. I think it just strikes me as odd because obviously this guy, he must, I mean, he must have contacted the news himself about it, but at the I'm same late. time, it's like he's from Mecklenburg County, which, Amber, that's where Charlotte is, right? Mm-hmm. So, surely someone from Mecklenburg County is familiar with, with the, the story. legend of Normie, I would, I would assume. I wouldn't think that they would be so shocked to see this creature that they'd be like, oh my god, I have to call the news. Like, living in that area, you have to know about it, right? Well... So that's why it feels a little attention-seeking, because it's like... The only other caveat that I would have to that is because that it's still not that far from Fort Bragg unless they happen to, you know, be serving in the military here and then, you know, they get out and they're like, okay, we'll just go settle in Charlotte and they never hear a f thing about it. But I mean, that's yeah. about the only caveat that you have. That's about it. Yeah. I don't know. It's just strange. It still um, it still has a, a way for it to be very opportunistic. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, going back to... Was it the bunyip that was described as having a dog head? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the bunyip was, was scuba, described many different diver. ways. <laughs> many. Yeah. Um... There was a scuba diver at Lake Norman who reported narrowly escaping a creature with a dog-like head and glowing red eyes that chomped onto one of his flippers. The flipper was lost, and the diver survived. Did you say glowing uh, okay. red eyes? <sighs> I'm, I'm a dog-like head. What is with these people? I'm, tr I'm trying yes. to think... I'm trying to think of an aquatic creature to begin with a dog-like head, and I... No, that's an otter, Ryan. It, an otter is not going to... No. But the glowing red eyes. Yeah. Oh, I'm gl I glossed over that bit. Well, right, okay. <laughs> mm. um, right. I don't... <sighs> I don't know. I, I didn't... I didn't make a note of it. I don't know why, but I remember reading something that someone, I swear it was something that someone submitted where they were, it was someone and their friends and they were like swimming near the dam or near a bridge on Lake Norman. Like they were jumping from the bridge or the dam or whatever into the water, like just like hanging out. And someone who was on the dam was about to jump in, and then they, they saw something in the water near their friends. I swear I read this on that website or something. I don't know why I didn't make a note of it. But they had, they saw something when they were about to jump in, and it looked like, I guess, the Loch Ness Monster. They said it was, like, 14 feet long or something. like Or it 
I don't know how these people are getting these measurements. I will yeah. say that. Just guess. Just guess. Yeah, guess. I don't know why I didn't note that one. That one was creepy, in my opinion. Hey, I mean, can you, you imagine, in? like, mm. hanging out with your friends swimming and you're about to, like, dive yeah, off of the dam or something and there's just that. something, like, a shadow in the water. Like, oh, my God. You'd be out, like, mm-hmm. on light. Just like, mm-hmm. nah, mm-hmm. not doing that. Um, let's see, what else? A person on a jet ski at Lake Norman claimed that a monster surfaced in front of him and brushed up against his leg, leaving behind a slimy substance that later resulted in a rash. Ugh. Which kind of brings me back to the mutated animal because of the nearby, um... What was it nearby? The... Power, was it power plant? The power plant? Oh. Is that what it was? Oh. The, yeah, it was a power plant, I think. Yeah. That kind of that kind of makes me think about about that theory. Well, that's right, because we mentioned mean, the Simpsons fish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not educated on this stuff, but what kind of slime would leave a rash? Well, the only the, I was trying to think that I, none of it wouldn't, none of it would really, because a fish is natural. I'm I'm saying a fish just for argument's sake. It, it's it's natural, obviously, f- for them, so it wouldn't really have an effect against a human and like an allergy wise, unless said person has, because I I, got, I can't remember what the condition is called, but there are some people out there where if their skin is rubbed with pretty much anything with any excess force or not very much force can bring them out in some sort of rash or redness of the skin it can generally happen but a fish yeah, but like, of sorts yeah but like is, look at a jellyfish it's, get, yeah they just stung. rush up against you and they get stung yeah, by and, and, uh, yeah, yeah and you get so, stung yeah um, I mean it's not a, leaving a slime or anything like that but no but it still obviously has an, has an effect so so maybe it's a defense ne- defense mechanism from Normie. Yeah. I'm not the only one, right? No. No. Yeah, okay. We'll break up a lot then. Just Amber, continue on. I'll there. figure it out. <laughs> it's fine. Continue on. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's see. There, I don't know how long ago, there's a story about a few friends who were floating off of a boat. I guess maybe they, they had anchored the boat in the middle of the lake and maybe they had tubes or something chilling out on the water next to the boat. I don't know. Um, but one of the guys suddenly got pulled under the water. <laughs> um He reappeared a a couple seconds later and described that he had seen something long and slimy with prickly skin. So normally is slimy as And prickly. And prickly. Prickly skin? What? As well as slimy? How did they go hand in hand? I don't remember if I mentioned Mm. it on the first episode, but... But yeah. most people have described him as being a long serpentine with scaly fins or flippers. Kind of like Nessie, I guess. Kind of like Nessie, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to say one yeah. thing. You <laughs> better stop swimming in Lake Norman. <laughs> 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 or continue. Hey, more, more, more content for us. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Or continue and get a proper <laughs> description. It would really help us out. I mean... Yeah. Take take a decent photo. Yeah, something or don't or better yet, find that house with the hole in it and don't be a little. B- just go swimming in it. This oh, this is one of the reasons else. why I kind of do buy the whole normie thing because there aren't um, an there overwhelming a, yeah. amount of photos because it's like yeah. these people who are submitting sightings have truly been caught in the moment and are like, you know, you don't. I wouldn't think that fast to take a photo, I don't think. But that that's kind of no. why no, I think it's valid. Generally, when you're in water, you're not going to have your phone or something handy. No. Yeah, the only time you would have a camera in water is if you are going there for a specific reason to document something underwater because you'd have the equipment ready. That is the only time you would. 
So all these people that have come forward with uh, encounters have been on like normally either swimming, chilling out, just having a general good time and then seeing something. But even legit people with the intention to go out there and look for Normie, they're getting their 250 pound lines snapped by the So that seems very compelling to me too. Yeah. 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 Um, Oh God. I was looking to see if there had been any more sightings since I initially did this research. I wasn't going to read this one on here because hashtag creaky, I think read it on their show and I didn't want to like piggyback off theirs, but this one, it was just written so nicely. <laughs> um, okay. This, I feel like this person put a lot of thought into theirs It was submitted by Caleb Tyler from Cornelius, North Carolina. This was, this was January of 2020. So just over a year ago, he says, It was a quiet and peaceful winter morning. You know, one of those mornings where the mist rises out of the lake high into the sky. I was just paddling along when all of a sudden a bright light flashed from beneath. I stared down into the water and saw to my shock that the depths of the lake were illuminated with a ghostly white light. I see all sorts of creatures swimming in the glowing depths. Some were beautiful, others ugly, and some were just plain terrifying. But the greatest shock came when I stared into the light and realized I saw a black circle like a pupil in the middle of the glowing sphere. I then realized it was the glowing eye of a giant monster. Ooh. Beautifully written. <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> oh my god. Sounds like he'd um, partaken in something interesting before he went for his morning Very battle. much so. Um... <laughs> Acid trip. I mean, <laughs> okay. There's someone else on the site who they submitted a sighting saying that they saw what looked like a catfish the size of a school bus. Bruh. <laughs> um... Bruh. <laughs> nah, that's a f- whale. <laughs> nah, nah. Catfish <laughs> no, no, are no. so ugly, so, but I'll be goddamn so if they're not tasty. Just one big eye. Yeah, just just the one. Yeah. <laughs> he could have been. Maybe he was asleep. Maybe cyclops. he was on his side like this. Just yeah. op- open one eye. What's that I see? What are you doing in my leg? Who's on my leg? Yeah. Who's on my leg? <laughs> I'll point you Some people sleep with one eye open. He might got enemies. Don't judge him. I used to sleep with both my eyes open. I used to sleep with both my eyes open. It was very you would weird. sleep with both eyes open. It was creepy. very weird. It was very weird. <laughs> so bizarre. Funny as f though. Hearing the stories like the next morning. My mum would be like, You slept with your eyes open last night. I don't remember. She was like, yeah, I was waving at you for ages, but you didn't respond. Yeah, that's because I was asleep. (laughs) One thing I have noticed a lot in terms of consistency with these stories is that there are a pretty big number of people who, at the root of their stories, it all comes down to, it was a quiet night on the lake, like no boats were out. And suddenly there's just waves churning, like there's something underneath causing a surface disturbance. Yeah. Mm. That's a lot, a lot of the postings on that website describe something like that happening. They're like, you know, we're just at the lake, there's no boats out there, no one's swimming, nothing's going on, no wind, nothing like that. And then suddenly there are just waves on waves just That's churning what I do. on the water. That's what I do like about this one in particular is because a lot of the a, a lot of the sightings or factoids, whatever, there's a lot in common on the census of that. Um, unlike the the Bunyip, for example, where the descriptions were anything and everything, no one really knew what the fuck it was. Yeah, so. It, you know, so this in the sense it adds a lot more mystery to it because it's like, well, hang on a minute this much is this person's story and a lot as yeah. well as this one and this one and this one whereas this detail is a little bit there's a little more bit consistency different. yeah and well, even if the only consistent thing with the there, bunyip was it was huge it was huge yeah yeah um can't for definite so so that's what i like about this one um but also in the same context 
I, this is throwing it way out there, but just speaking, for, if it was my sort of perspective, if I was out chilling on the lake by myself with somebody and it was a quiet night, no one else around, if my paranoia or anxiety started to rise a little bit, I think I'd feel like I'd start to see as well that actually wasn't there. So that's just the counter argument, but yeah. I mean, you're not entirely wrong, no. Hmm? I said you're not wrong. Yeah. It happens a lot, you know, you start to see things that aren't you there, like the chair in the corner of your room just with the clothes on. At night time, it's the demon watching you sleep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if you go out on this lake with no prior knowledge of this, oh, urban, then... le or this urban legend, and then you see something, and it's like... Well, what maybe the that's well, well. Then maybe that's why well, a lot. Maybe that's why a lot of the sightings are describing it as a catfish because you you try and think of a largest lake known fish. It is a catfish. It, it, to, you know, to my knowledge, I would be like, well, yeah, it looked like a catfish. So that's like it, maybe that's where the si sizing aspect comes into. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. You got a prior knowledge to it. You are going to think, what the. F this this one um, sighting that this is from 2011. The reported by Brock Ballin from Mooresville. Um, he said that he and his friends were hanging out on the boat after a long day of fishing. They were just kind of like sitting around for a bit. And they said their watercraft was almost completely overturned. Whoa. He says, the force was unbelievable. I thought I might be thrown from the boat. And then I saw it. It was green in color and slimy. It appeared to resemble a large snake like an anaconda. And then he ends this... it. Please, everyone, be careful out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I cry so for the help. <laughs> the slimy thing is definitely a common factor. Yeah. Does it? Did he detail like how big his boat was or whatever no, he was on? No, I gave you everything he gave us. That so. oh, that would have been like. I mean, it would have been. It would have been nice to know. I mean, if it was a fishing boat, you can imagine. I can't imagine it was a little Yeah, even if it was a John boat, I'm like if it was a John boat, that I mean that's pretty small, but it's probably just a standard pleasure craft. Yeah. 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 Um 20 foot boat, something like that. And again, I do want to reiterate from my first episode, if this were an alligator, I feel like it'd be a little bit easier for people to identify that it was an alligator. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. You, you would know one of them if you saw it. An alligator is like, an alligator. There's no confusing it. I mean, you can yeah. you can tell the difference between an alligator and a slimy, like, snake-like thing that you just yeah. described. Like, oh, yeah. And alligators There's... don't have fins. I mean, they've got legs. They don't have, like... No. Which, I mean, their feet look kind of flappy, but you're definitely not going to mistake in that claw-like thing for a, yeah. a flipper or whatever yeah. the f I mean, when, when alligators swim, they don't, they don't use their legs, do they? They sort of just... No. The legs yeah, they use... Tucking, yeah, yeah. No, so, so, and I they kind of just... So maybe the person who was... The, who, the, the group of people that, was gonna that were going to jump off the dam like into the lake. Like, if you're looking at... I don't, how, do, do we know how high the dam is, Jess? No. Okay. Well, it's a dam. So it's going to be relatively high. If you're looking at it d down, um, I guess that could kind of like the alligator could, in a sense, look like maybe a snake or a large fish because obviously it's very streamlined when it's swimming from a mm -hmm. distance. So maybe that's that one. But yeah, a close-up encounter, you, you would know. But at the uh, same time, I'm I'm still I cannot remember where I saw that story of that person diving off the dam. I couldn't find it in the sightings because I just looked for it. I heard that somewhere. I read it somewhere. I don't remember. But at the same time, if you were that person or you were in that group of people, and you were in the water waiting for your friend to dive in, and your friend was up there and they saw an alligator swimming at you, why wouldn't the alligator attack any of the people in the water? No, exactly. That's yeah. what's weird. There, I mean, there has not really been any attacks aside from the initial yeah, the um, one. indigenous man, yeah. like, generations ago. And as, as we know with alligators, once it gets hold of its prey, it doesn't let go. It, it, it's, mm. it's literally locked on. So, that, so the one person that pulled down and described as a slimy and, and prickly skin, prickly maybe an alligator, maybe, but it would have not let go. It would happen but then there's there the then. story with the guy, the scuba diver, and the flipper. 
dog light so head, I took the flipper off. Well, mm -hmm. I feel like the sightings, maybe, maybe they're not getting attacked because they don't, these people look, I mean, they do not look like animals, but if you're wearing a flipper, I mean, it's pretty common knowledge that sharks, they'll, they'll attack people on surfboards because when they're laying on their boards, paddling out to the water, they look like animals to sharks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why they attack. Yeah. So it makes me wonder if this creature only goes yeah. for Shark. other creatures. Maybe. It's also known as well that obviously an animal will only attack something smaller than itself. It's very rare that it will go after something its same size or bigger, so it knows it has the upper hand. So I don't know. Have you met my chihuahuas? I was about to say. I had a little Jack Russell with a little dog complex. She didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no. What was that? How many times has Jess threatened me and yet I'm taller than her? But, it, but by the by. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like... Um, Oh, I forgot my example that I was going to use now. Oh, well. But, you know, it, yeah, the principle applies. So that's why the sightings of Lake Norman... She could example, lay you out, no problem. Yeah, I can. I got you. You actually got that? Yeah, she said I could lay you out, no problem. Oh. Oh, for sure. For sure. Anybody uh, could I, do that. <laughs> yeah. My shadow could do that. I have no qualms and anybody could do that. I don't like to admit it, but it's true. <sighs> Amber, you good? I hope I am. I don't know. Just pray oh, for yeah, my no. internet. <laughs> Why are you staring at me like that? Oh. All I got was internet. That's all I heard. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just watching Amber. I'm just kind of like... It's great entertainment value. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that does it for me this week. Thank God. I managed to... <laughs> so what can we expect in part three of Lake Norman? <laughs> My booty shorts. Why you so, why you so <laughs> weird just yourself? <laughs> like, what can um, we expect in part three? Hang on a minute. Let me just... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some, some other kind of local things happening in that Lake Norman, as I've found in my research, is a very spooky area in general, not just because of Normie. There's, there's a lot going on there. I'll just go ahead and drop this key term, cancer clusters, and I'll leave that at that. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in that area. I think it's just a very historically and supernaturally strange area in general and then I'll, I'll also kind of we can talk about what other people or residents their explanations for normie would be or could be okay there's a lot in that there's a lot of activity over there so right. and next week we've got amba we and her amba. titties <laughs> Amber and her titties. I promise, I promise YouTube viewers, I will, I'll wear more makeup next week. <laughs> <laughs> the best bit was, that was in slow-mo as well because of the yeah. lack of titties. <laughs> Make great content for us, but it's going to be <laughs> for YouTube. <laughs> I did it for y'all anyway. I didn't do it for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so what can we expect from you next week, Amber? A little teaser. Um, it is something that I am very, very passionate about and have been passionate about since I was a child. I gave a big hint when I confirmed uh, Jess's fun fact about the ocean being 80% undiscovered. I know what it and is. You do know what it is, and I'm just going to say... If there is 80% of the ocean that is undiscovered, the possibilities are limitless. And I just want you to take that, take that into your mind and explore. And that's it. That's all I got. That's all we okay. got, too. 
<laughs> I, it was I, I, got, I pieced it together I, I pieced it together but it was uh, yeah. fucking hell my poor internet uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow she froze now big time oh look at those titties in slow motion oh <laughs> <laughs> It's almost oh, like watching Pamela Anderson on Baywatch, <laughs> running down the beach. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hopefully she can come over here to record next week, because this is not Fingers doing crossed. it. This is not no. doing it. <sighs> not getting it. What is she? <laughs> what is she? She's so far behind us. What the hell? <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, let's let's get out of here because this let's is the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week, guys. See you all next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.